Hey, everybody, this is Patrick Schrocka, Editor-in-Chief of Yachting Magazine, and today I'm here with David Schwedell, Executive Director of Uniesi Yachts, and today we're here to talk about Uniesi as a brand and a brand new line of yachts called the Exuma. Good morning, David. Good morning, Patrick. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, too. Uh, I'm glad we could be here. So, for those who may not know, could you just give us like some brief insight into the Uni Uniesi brand and their kind of yacht building philosophy and their kind of their mission statement? Sure, of course. So briefly, Uniesi, as you know, has been around for about 30 years now. Uh, they were originally manufactured in Bergamo. When we acquired the brand about four years ago, we moved the facilities over to the West Coast. We're based out of Pisa. Uh, our entire line, we honestly focus more on the livability aspects of the yacht first above anything else. So what I mean by that specifically is we took the existing hull designs and everything from the interior volume size has been increased. So everything that you'll see and touch in touch in ESE today still has the same luxury appointments that it once had just to a hundred time multiple basically. Yeah, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity many, many years to see a lot of the UNESC line. And, you know, they've always been known for their express cruisers and their Flybridge motor yachts. But the Exuma line, you're, you're taking the brand in kind of a new design direction. So could you kind of tell us a little bit about how the Exuma line came to be and, and how that design direction kind of started for you? Sure. Great question, actually. The, the Exuma line is based on our 48 open hull, which has been around for more than 25 years now. It's a proven hull originally designed by Fred Hudson. What we wanted to do was approach the market with something that you could fish, dive from, extended stays, and have the experience and ability as an owner operator to take your yacht, say, from South Florida to the Bahamas and have everything on board the yacht that you would need to have with you, but to be able to do all the excursion type activities that folks want to do. And it always seems that you're kind of stuck in the middle. Like we all know folks that have, because we have friends and you have friends that own sport fishermen, and then they towed their center console behind it, right? In our case, what we're building is a yacht that you can fish. There's a difference there. We have high-end luxury appointments throughout the vessel. Everything about it is designed around getting to a place, but being able to use the yacht as a utilitarian overview. You can do everything you want to do on that vessel. So the first Exuma model is going to be this HTC5. So that's a 54-footer. What does that uh, model designation mean and stand for? What is HTC? Sure. So it stands for hot, hard top cruiser. Okay. So we have four Exumas, the HTC. We have an HTF, which is a hard top fish version. Mm -hmm. We have the S mm -hmm. and the SF. The F designation is fish. In the fish vessels, you have the ability to designate things like live wells, insulated storage in the floor, coolers, larger ice makers, right? Not only do you want that for fishing, but for extended stays. You also, I have folks that like to go out and they, they're not gonna be back for two or three days if they could choose to, say from Florida. You wanna go to the Sal Bank to go fishing. You know, if you can stay there overnight for two or three nights, mm -hmm. you wanna be able to do that. The Exuma allows you to do that in the fish version. The HTC as a cruiser version is a vessel that you have a very large cockpit area, so it can serve as a great cruising boat, picnic boat type vessel. And then you have the HTF, which gives you a second station on a tuna tower, custom outriggers, et cetera. Okay, so a very versatile layout. Um, so what up from, but from a below deck standpoint, these models will be the same? When you have the HTC and the HTF version, you have an enclosed salon area. And in that, you can have a starboard or port helm station configuration. And in addition to that, you have uh, a large sofa area, which also doubles as a guest sleeping quarter. And when you go downstairs, you have your forward master, and then you have the side cabin, which has two bunks side by side, not on top of each other. You have side by side. So there's a fair bit of customization that the owner can kind of personalize their- Very their, much their so. In, in the HTC and HTF, when you go downstairs, you have another salon area with a table that goes down and you can have another sleep area. So you know how it is when you, you get your wife, kids, and then they bring their right. friends and the kids come on board. You need what we call the kids spillover area, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do for sure. <laughs> So I've, I've been fortunate enough over the years to, to see trial uh, several UNESC models. 
one of the things I always found about them is when you're running them, whether it's, you know, flat water, rough water, they feel very solid underfoot. And I, if I remember correctly, you can correct me if I'm wrong. If I remember correctly, one of the things about them is they have kind of this grid that kind of fits into the hull and kind of creates this rigid structure. Is that yep. something we're going to see in these, these Exuma, Exuma models? We've taken that to another level. You have that same grid that you identified. Our stringer system and bulkhead system is much wider in of itself. Mm -hmm. And then what we've done is we've taken the entire floor and that's all fiberglass and that's bonded to the hull. And then the deck is bonded to the hull. Right. Think of it like a horizontal, if you will, bulkhead completely across the entire top side of the boat. And all of that is cored and insulated. So it's a very quiet, soft ride in any sea conditions. All right, so you're creating a very monocoque structure there. You got it. Right. So the whole boat is basically completely bonded with no wood whatsoever, except obviously for the cabinets that are put in. So, I, and I know that in, on other NESE models, I've seen this, um, you have uh, several power choices. Is that, is that gonna be the same in the Exuma line? Yeah, we're not beholden to any one uh, manufacturer. The customer really drives that. So they could have their choice of uh, Volvo IPS, Cummins, uh, or man engines, depending on the configuration they want. So if you're and, doing a straight shaft or an IPS, I mean, how do you do that in terms of a mold? Do you have like dams or something? So like how, does, how do you actually configure for each? Sure. So all the engines are midship, right? So if you're, you're basically midship and you have a shaft version, it's standard. And when you're doing the IPS, uh, or even if you put a Zeus in for a Cummins, which some folks may want, uh, what we have is a, a shaft that goes long, and then the IPS system's put in the back of the boat where it needs to be. Okay, so you're jack shafting it back to the, the it. pod. Okay, great. Yeah. Awesome. Do you, um, do you have any kind of projected performance numbers on, on what these different power options will produce? We do. We originally projected that the HTC would do a top speed of about 37 knots. The boat's doing close to 40 knots. We actually had it delivered here in Miami about 30 days ago, and we've been running it consistently. And what is and the power has, line hole number one? It has, it has the Volvo uh, 950s. So Volvo 950, and you're getting 40 knots? It's about 39 point fill in the blank. 30, <laughs> 39 to 40, you know, it's hard. it's difficult with these things, right? Because the sea condition was about three foot seas. We were into the wind. We had six full grown men on the boat. We were running and we, we wanted to touch 40. We were almost there. And that was, so that's a pretty loaded boat. It was fully loaded and beyond, yeah. Okay, let's get, it's good to know, it's good to know. Yeah. Um, all right, so you said the HTC5 is here. When will we kind of see some of these other versions of the Exuma line either in the States or abroad? We've got uh, four Exumas in production now, mm -hmm. uh, and they should all be landing at different times during the year next year. We were slow down, obviously, due to COVID in the earlier part of this year. Uh, that put off our production timeline. Mm -hmm. So next year, we'll have four boats coming off the line. The year after that, uh, it looks like it's lining up to be six to eight, and then it should go from there. You know, we're never going to be a builder that's doing 50 to 100 boats or more per year. That's not what we're set up for. We are a custom to semi-custom builder. And in a perfect world, we'd like to see the, the factory maintain, uh, you know, a 20 to 30 run rate in about five to seven years comfortably. You said that this uh, Exuma was originally based off of 48. So we have this 50, which is, we now have this 54. So are there plans to take this Exuma line and kind of, uh, do different size ranges of this design? Definitely. Next year, uh, we're going to be uh, bringing out an Exuma HTC-6, which is a 60-foot boat. Wow. Uh, it'll have three staterooms. We already have all the designs done. All the engineering is in at Rena to get our uh, Class A approval for it. Once we receive that, we'll finish final engineering, final design. We'll get to work on that boat next year. Wow. Well, I know, I know we, we know the boat is uh, here and uh, it's in Florida right now. We look forward to getting on it very, very soon. Um, so stay tuned for that, everybody. Um, but for now, um, as we kind of wrap things up here, if people are interested in learning more about Uniesi and the, and the Exuma line, where, where can they get more information? They can go to our website at uniesi.com. They can actually go and build their boat online in the next few weeks. They're gonna be able to download all of that information. We do have dealers across the country and a dealer network that's expanding throughout Europe uh, and in Asia over the next six months. 
Okay, well, David, thank you very much for your time this morning. Really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed this first look at the, uh, the Exuma series from Uniesi. And stay tuned for more because more is coming. We'll see you Thanks, soon. Patrick. Thank you, man.